Welcome to the special meeting of the Northampton City Council, June 29th, 2015, 1915 was some time ago. Um, I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I'm presiding. We have one item on the agenda tonight. First though, we start as our uh, custom with public comment and we have three people signed up. All three know the rules, so I won't bore you with the rules about the public comment again. But uh, first up, we have Jasper Lapiensky. And Jasper, we don't have the timer running up there, but I'll start it here. Okay. Okay. So whenever you're ready. My name is Jasper Lapiensky. I live at 43 West Street. Dear Chief Casper, in yours, as in so many professions, it is both undeniable and unavoidable that the higher you rise up the chain of command, the less connected you become with the minutiae of work at the bottom. Throughout history, factory supervisors and superintendents of schools and secretaries of defense have vowed to buck this trend with the best of intentions for the good of the people. I know that you have that goal in mind as well, and I so see no reason to mock you for it. But please, in your newfound authority, do not forget just how truly difficult this is to achieve. We'll be with you. We are an involved community. But each new day in your second floor office will be one more since you last used discretion in a traffic stop or tried to determine who started a fight. As Lord Acton famously said, power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. No stranger to power himself. What he meant was that even those with the strongest moral compasses can easily become complacent and be led astray. Over the past year, our nation has witnessed a coming out of one of our most pervasive dirty secrets, unprovoked, unjustified police shootings. While black men represent a disproportionate number of these, police violence is visited daily on innocent white men, Asian men, Jews, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as women. In our collective horror at seeing these crimes, our collective guilt at having ignored them for so long, and our collective visceral rush to condemn them and hold the perpetrators accountable, we forget one crucial detail. None of the officers involved woke up those mornings hoping to end the day on leave pending the outcome of a grand jury. Training is important. I hope you develop the best police training in the country so that even your rookies instinctively know how to react to fear and de-escalate threats. Staffing your force with calm, compassionate officers helps too. I hope that your hiring policies are the soundest and most thorough imaginable. And I hope that you, as chief of police, keep on top of your game so that officers are constantly reminded of their primary duty to protect and serve each and every one of us. Yet I implore you to understand that none of this will ever be enough. Perfection is impossible. No sensitivity training or Black Lives Matter march or community policing award can prevent the members of your force from making mistakes. Good, honest, hardworking officers will visit undue suffering on citizens under your watch. And to maintain the trust we bestow upon you tonight, it is incumbent upon you to own these mistakes, apologize for them, and take swift action to correct them. We, the citizenry, don't expect perfection in our new chief. All we ask is that you do your best and strive every day to do even better. Don't defend the indefensible. Prevent bad behavior when you can and own it without hesitation when it occurs. Above all, be honest with the public about your successes and failures since you will always have both. I'll start. In 2010, back when you were a sergeant, I lied to you to get out of trouble. It wasn't a big lie and it wasn't a lot of trouble I was getting out of and I honestly could not say whether or not I'd do it again in the same situation. But I hope that by bringing it forward, I can start a productive, respectful dialogue between those who serve under you and those they serve that will endure into the foreseeable future. Thank you, Jess. Um, next up, uh, Amy Bookbinder, please. Well, that's going to be hard. I'm Amy Bookbinder, Grove Avenue in Leeds. And you'll be happy to know this will be my shortest comment on record. As some of you may know, I was quoted in the Gazette from my conversation with Jody Casper in its article about the meet and greet for the community and the finalists in the search for our new police chief. In a follow-up article, Jody was quoted as saying she'd like to continue that conversation. I would welcome that opportunity and hope others will join in. I, along with many citizens across the city, have been rooting for Jody. So I came tonight to thank her publicly and to thank the mayor for recommending her <coughs> and to thank you in advance of your vote for confirming this historic appointment 
Congratulations, Tony. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Roy C. Martin, or the hat. The hat. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. Ladies and gentlemen, well, I would say at home, but uh, maybe we don't have a camera. So, I, I come tonight because I wanted to welcome Jody Casper to the uh, Chief's position. And, uh, she's already been uh, nominated and everything, and uh, I think everything is pretty much done. So, welcome aboard, Jody. And, uh, you know, uh, I've seen this police force, let's say 25 years ago, I was a drunk in this town, and, uh, you know, they, they, some of the police force handled me a little roughly and stuff, right? But it wasn't nothing that I didn't deserve because, uh, you know, when you're fighting with them, they're going to fight back with you, right? But they did restrain, you know, restrain me in several easy ways. Ah, uh, you know, and I spent a few nights down the old plank, right? You know, but the old plank is gone now. I, I, you know, and I don't want to see you inside the new jail. So, uh, so Jody, I don't think I'm gonna be down there. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, but to really come down to it, right? Uh, I've seen a big shift in this police force, and uh, the old chief, right, Chief Senkowitz. Right now, he come a long ways, and he brought his force along. And uh, Miss Casper will be getting a police force that I would say is almost perfect. Uh, you know what few any few things there is to bring up. Right, I think she'll handle with with ease. So uh, with that, I'd say that uh, Miss Casper, right, you know, yeah. Uh, when you move into that office, right? You know, good luck and good luck in the future. And I hope you always, always uh, keep your offices the way they are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's all we have signed up. Is anyone else interested in speaking at this time? Um, uh, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, retired Captain Joe Conkus in the room. It's a pleasure to see him again. Um, and of course, why don't we get to it? And uh, I'll ask for the roll call, please. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Spector. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Sheriff. Here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. So we have a quorum. Uh, Councilor Carney is absent. Uh, with uh, notice, so. Um, we have one item on the agenda, and that is the appointment of Jody Casper as the Chief of Police. I'm gonna read the uh, mayor's order. This is uh, from the mayor, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, appointment of the Chief of Police. I'm appointing Jody Casper to the position of Chief of Police, filling the vacancy created by the retirement of Chief Russell Sinkowitz. Jody Casper has been a police officer for 19 years and is currently captain of operations in the Northampton Police Department. She joined our department in 1998 and has served with distinction as patrol officer, detective, patrol staff sergeant, patrol <coughs> lieutenant, and detective lieutenant before assuming her current leadership role directing police operations. Captain Casper holds a master's degree in public administration and criminal justice from Westfield State University and a bachelor's degree in criminal justice psychology uh, from Westville State University. She's a gra graduate of Mohawk Trail Regional High School in Shelburne Falls. And Captain Casper has the experience, intellect, skills, and integrity to lead the Northampton Police Department. I'm pleased and honored to submit her appointment as our next Chief of Police for the City Council confirmation in accordance with Northampton Charter, Article 2, 2-10. Uh, so, I will accept, I would move we uh, Approve the mayor's appointment. Second. Motions are made and second. Councilor Adams. I just want to say that um, I'm happy to see that the announcement of, of you becoming chief has already led to confessions of crimes from members of the public. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I just want to say that citywide in my travels, I've, I've heard nothing but enthusiasm for you. You have big shoes to fill, but I'm sure you'll, you'll uh, rise to that challenge. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. 
Uh, Council Sharon and Council Labarge. Um, I just want to say that I'm um, I'm glad this. I think this process has been really great. You've shown without a doubt that you are the right person for this job, um, and I'm very thankful for your obvious dedication to Northampton and the department, both in word and in deed, and and all the years you've already put in. And, um, and we're very, very lucky to have you. Um, and I also want to say, in my past life, I, uh, I, I studied women and minorities in, um, in professions in which they were underrepresented. And not surprisingly, the most important thing is to have someone there who you can identify with um, and who's supportive of you. And so I'm very glad that you will be that person. And just anecdotally, I can say that <coughs> I've seen in my own daughters this unbelievable enthusiasm for you, and all you know with all the coverage in the past couple of weeks, and um, it's just really amazing to see that and to see that they already find you to be a real inspiration. So, Council Labarge, okay. uh, Jody, I cannot tell you how many calls and even people that I have talked with in Florence and Northampton hoping that the mayor was going to appoint you. And I have to say, just even hearing the other candidate, when you came out to say that this is your home, your community, we all knew that. And I feel that you're a listener, which I think is extremely valuable. And you talk about filling big, big shoes, but I think your shoes would do the right job. And I think the community itself, I feel that you will work very, very well with them. And also, you do and you feel that an advisory, a citizen's advisory committee should be put in place. And many people have said that in the city. You're extremely intelligent. You've worked very tirelessly from going from rank to rank. And I am very proud that you will be our new chief in the city of Northampton. Um, actually, traditionally, this is the point at which we grill you, uh, grill the candidate, and you make you stand up, and then we ask you all these really tough questions. But you've already been vetted, clearly. I, does anyone, does anyone want to? You know, throw an I got you question at the, at the <laughs> candidate. No? Anyone else want to comment? I mean, I'll, I will take this time, of course, to reiterate what I've said over and over again. Um, actually, I don't want to say I'm pressing or anything, but I, I remember back when I was a little video clerk once upon a time, and patrol officer Jody Casper would come in as a customer and also as, as uh, an officer. And I said, that woman would be an ideal police chief. Now, little did I think that I would be at some point in a position where I'd actually get to confirm that. That really confuses me. The fact that I am in this position. In fact, this is a rare circumstance. Not a lot of councilors actually get to approve a police mm -hmm. chief because of the, um, I didn't get, to, uh, I came in just after Russ got appointed. Um, and it should be noted that, I, Building on um, Mr. Martin's comments, this department actually is considered to be an exemplary paragon of a police department regionally and anyone else who has analyzed it. We tend to be, as a community, and then this is for the good, and I think Joan Eats owned this as well, hypercritical. And we, we hold our police department to a different standard, I think, than other communities in many respects. That, in large part, is the responsiveness and the strength of this department is due to the leadership of Russ Sinkowitz, who is leaving us, but also his wisdom in his selections for promotions, Captain Conkus being one, and Captain Casper, the short-lived Captain Casper, who will soon uh, predict, I, my, my prediction will hold up, will soon be chief. Um, and, I, and to Councilor Sherrill's point, I think it's rather important, and we were discussing this before, and we've discussed it when we've done, Jody for some reasons asked me to come in and do interviews of recruits. And the frustration, of course, that we heard during this whole process was 
and that you hear representing uh, uh, Mr. Lapiansky's comments is the conflicts that we see developing departments is a lack of representation of a community that's reflected, that would be seen and reflected in, in the department. That's not this department's fault, but the fact is that this community has 50, is 54% identify as female. And we have three active officers currently on the department of one on disability now. Um, that's not a fair representation. So for the largest disparity, not only culturally or anything else, we have a real lack of women, and that's not from lack of trying. That's possibly from lack of inspiration. There's a whole millennial group that's hard to inspire to become a police officer, particularly these days. It's, 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 it's a pretty thankless task. Jody, the mayor's wise choice in Jody, Jody has an additional burden that doesn't necessarily fall many other police officers. Has to serve as a as as a role model and hopefully appeal to women so that they they would consider a career in policing here in the city of Northampton. Because I really can't help but think that that improves many of the points of conflicts and many of and the new way and a new approach towards what policing means. We require policing. We demand it. And at the same time, we push it away when we feel it's too aggressive, or it's too, or if it's unfairly focused or applied. And no one comes under greater scrutiny because no one has greater authority over us as community members. Um, and the, it is it is clearly one of the tougher jobs going. I'm ecstatic. I'm very pleased with this selection, and I'm proud in anticipation of the outcome of this vote. And with that, can I have a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, a month or two ago, I emailed you about uh, a practice that other communities are putting in place with respect to the opioid crisis, mm -hmm. and, uh, and how in some, some cities you can go in and if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a drug user, an addicted person, you can give your drugs and, and, and you can surrender your drugs, I believe, and or you know, just simply ask for help and, and the police will make it a priority to get that person help. And I'm wondering um, if, if we're looking into that, I know, I know you're, part of your response is that you want to discuss it with the opioid task force, but I'm wondering if there's any real progress made in that direction because one of the things I don't want to do is just say, you know, we're progressive because we have a needle exchange and not really keep on top of, of, um, of, of the crisis and, and the measures that are taken to reduce it. It's a great program that, that the philosopher has, right? That's the article that you sent me. I know it's gotten a lot of national attention as well. Um, and it, it's a great program. They happen to have beds. And that's really the struggle that we have in this community is where can we find beds? So it's one step to say, well, you can come into our lobby and we may not charge you, but this angel that they have, which is what they call them, this someone who can then bring you to a facility, um, we don't have that. So. Do I think that's a great idea? Well, we'll see what happens in that community. I like the concept behind it, and I like this general transition that we're in where we're looking at people who are addicted to a variety of things, looking at the illness versus you know, the criminal aspect. Uh, but I'm working on the Hampshire Hope, the DA program, and we're looking at a lot of different strategies. The governor just released a big thing this week that gave a lot of recommendations about how to deal with the opioid crisis. So we are on it. Um, I don't know what what the best strategy is going to be right now, and that's what we're in a very active stage of. We, I just had a meeting last week talking about different strategies. How to get more beds. So we're working on it. Uh, council comment. Um, not so much a question as a comment. Um, I just want to say that I support the Northampton Police Department. I support your appointment. Um, I'm very much looking forward to working with you. And we had a little bit of a chance to talk at the the meet and greet, and I'd like to really um, offer my a kind of linkage of arms and really looking at how we can work together on some of the the finer tunings of you know how the community and the police uh, department kind of interact around some of the um, some of the issues that we're dealing with you know nationwide um, but I, I absolutely plan to to vote to um, see you installed as our police chief and I'm very excited about it thank you uh, and 
by the way, to Councilor Adams' question, I know that actually part of the, the district attorney's plan is to expand um, rehab beds. We previously, this is a struggle with the needle exchange, was a lot of people will come and ask for help, and there are only four beds to assign people in Franklin County. And there are often less beds available here in, in this part of Hampshire County. And that was, there were, there was this horrible bottleneck. There was the the will was there from this police department, from the district attorney's office. There was just what the state has not come up with the facilities and the programs to to accommodate people who want to kick. And they are working on that now. Though there's talk about developing, I think, like a 64 unit space uh, bed unit space in Holyoke with some others. So hopefully, I I, I like the idea that you proposed as well. And, and I was grateful to hear the chief agreeing with that, that uh, harm reduction modality as opposed to a reactive policing and criminal reaction to uh, to a disease. So, uh, Councilor O'Donnell. Yeah, if I can, um, I, don't, I don't view this, as I said in the ordinance committee, I, didn't, I don't view this as grilling in any way. Um, actually, after hearing Councilor Adams' comments, I, I think it's good to get a, a couple of issues out here for a discussion, um, kind of to inaugurate your appointment and one issue that I was always interested in well in the ordinance committee I, I praised you for your scholarly work you know uh, you wrote a lot of um, fascinating articles that I tried to understand when I, when I looked them up and one you wrote a long time ago was about um, parking lot but well, that's one that you just implemented recently in the city and I think one question that I like to ask because I think it's on a lot of people's minds um, is just your your thoughts generally on community policing which I know is very much restrained by a lack of resources and money, um, especially in recent years. But you you implemented such a uh, not a not a new, but you, you implemented uh, a, a really good program for Northampton and Park and Walk that expanded community policing within our resources. And I'm wondering, can you speak at all to the future direction of that generally in the city? Generally, I think okay. uh, so. I have a lot of lists. I'm a lister, I have a lot of goals. I've had goals from the day that I came on and I've always worked with those goals and I continue to keep that list building. So now in this position, certainly I have a lot more ability to make some even more changes than I have in, in, the, in my position as a captain as I am now. Um, the community outreach is a huge focus on my current list of goals. I have a number of things listed on there on ways that I think we can deal with it uh, without costing the city. Uh, anything really. Uh, it's just a matter of looking at kind of hybrid positions, you know, having patrol officers who are doing something else in addition to their regular duties. Our officers are already very taxed with the number of calls that we have, but I'm looking at different options on how we can try to create that without adding more, more positions to the department. Uh, so working within our existing budget, I certainly think that those opportunities are there. I can't, I don't want to say too much more about it. I'm going to meet with the command staff uh, in a few weeks. We have a meeting date set where we're going to talk about some of the goals of the department. I'm going to ask them for what goals they want me to try to meet with them and, and you know, their input on my existing goals. And once we do that, I'll be able to make some more concrete statements about that. But in general, it's very much at the top of my list, my long list of things to do. Okay. Well, it's good to hear you just affirm what I already knew, which is you are committed to Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, I think we've... <laughs> 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 Let me drag this out. I just, as I said, we only get this one... Sh this is a one-off yes. for us, so we're kind of no staying problem. over here. <laughs> um, okay. um, I'm going to call for a roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. By unanimous acclamation, your appointment has been approved, and we thank you and the mayor.
Thank you. Well, I wish you had a card. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right, we'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock, Jody. With bells on. A motion to make to adjourn and seconded. Uh, did you have a comment? I think it's stars, not bells. Stars. Yes, bring your stars in mind. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Oh. Thank you all very much.